Right, this set of notes goes over um, the law of reflection and plane mirrors. The word plane is just another uh, term for flat all right, or straight edge. Um, you're probably familiar with these flat mirrors um, in your bathroom or your bedroom at home. They're typically made of glass. They have a reflective metallic backing. Um, so if you look at them from the edge, they might have a little bit of thickness to them, and that's basically the um, little bit of glass uh, surrounding the metallic backing. Right. Law of reflection, you probably um, observed it in your task number two from the inquiry activity, um, and that deals with the angles at which the light bounces off of the mirror. Um, you didn't really have too much terminology yet, but your incoming light ray is what's referred to as your incident ray. The green ray here, also your reflected ray, all right, bounces off the mirror at some angle. All right? This dashed line you were asked to draw in the inquiry activity is referred to as the normal line. It makes a 90 degree angle with the surface, um, also known as being perpendicular to the surface. So if I were to draw on this, right, this dashed line right here makes a perfect 90 degree angle with the mirror edge at the location the light strikes uh, the mirror. In continuing here, all right, the angle of incidence is measured from the incident light ray to that normal line. The angle of reflection is measured between the reflected ray and the normal line. And in all instances, the law of reflection uh, states that these two angles are equal to each other. So if this angle here, say, was, you know, 32 degrees, this angle in here would be 32 degrees and the entire angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray then would be in this instance 64 degrees. Okay, so that's just a quick summary of how light bounces off a mirror edge referred to as the law of reflection. Okay. Move ahead to the next slide. Okay, now if you were to look at a plane mirror, you can see images in it, right? You use that all the time for that. Um, in this example here, we have a candlestick as our object um, in front of a flat mirror. And if you were to do a little light ray trace, you can actually determine where the image appears, right? So if we had a light ray, bouncing off of the mirror. I think about light comes off of an object in all different directions. So we're just going to draw a few to see what's happening. All right? If this were to strike this mirror, it comes in at a little bit of an angle. All right? So if I were to uh, draw the normal line here, okay, I'll draw the normal line in green. All right? The normal line at the location it hits the mirror is right about there. So notice that this comes in at a little bit of an angle. So if we were to continue here, you see the reflected light ray uh, bounces off. And let me reposition this normal line. Normal line to the mirror is right about there. So notice it comes off with an equal angle of reflection right, compared to the angle of incidence. If we draw another light ray coming from the candlestick, say one that's going downward hits the mirror, it will bounce away downward. Okay, so notice these reflected rays here are in this dark green. Um, if we send another light ray, say, directly at the mirror, that comes in along the normal line. So its angle of incidence is zero, so this thing's just going to bounce straight back. Okay, notice that all these reflected light rays will never ever meet over here in front of the mirror. Okay, so when we're looking into a mirror, we're seeing these green light rays. And what happens is we, our mind traces them backwards, and it appears that the image is within the mirror or behind the mirror, even though it's not really behind it. If we backtrace these green reflected light rays, it appears that the light from the top of the object is coming at us from this location. 
and that is why the image that you view seems to be the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of it. Right? If you were to walk towards a flat mirror, you would see your image walk towards you. If you walked away from the mirror, you would see your image go backwards. Okay? The geometry kind of, you know, you can go through it and prove it that these two distances will always be the same for a flat plane mirror. Let's get rid of that line. Um, so as a quick little summary here. Um, you see an identical image inside a flat mirror. Um, it appears to be the same distance from the mirror as the object is. All right? You see identical colors in an image, so reflection does not affect the frequency or the wavelength of light at all. all right? um, those light rays that we trace backwards they don't really meet there, right? The light, if you were looking at light, it's not being, you know, you wouldn't have a picture of the candlestick behind the mirror. Um, so that is why this type of image is referred to as a virtual image, because the light doesn't actually meet there. It just appears to be coming from this location. Okay. Plane mirrors are used for many applications, um, you know, on a bicycle to look behind you or to look around corners. Okay. Um, but reflection requires if for a perfect image to have a very smooth surface but if you were to have a surface that is not perfectly smooth like in this little lake here notice that the image is distorted somewhat and that has to do with the fact that when light strikes the surface all right, it's kind of up and down up and down and you'll see that in the next slide here all right, so if I have an irregularly shaped surface, if I have all this light coming in, striking the surface, depending upon where it hits in these little valleys and hills, then the light's going to spread out on its way out and you don't get a clear focused image then. Um, if you were to actually draw the normal lines in this surface, right, if it was a flat surface, all the normal lines would be perfectly vertical, up and down. But you know, sometimes, like, if I look at this little uh, valley right here, and if I draw a normal line at that location, all right, so if I look at this spot right here, the normal line right at that part of the surface makes a 90-degree angle with the surface. Okay, move this back over. Right, right about there, that makes a 90 degree angle with the surface goes straight across. All right, now, wavelength of light is a very important factor in whether or not something will reflect off of it. Um, visible light has very, very small wavelengths, right, on the order of 400 to 700 nanometers. So you would need to have a surface that was smooth over those distances in order to reflect the light, right? However, if you have larger wavelength stuff, you can still reflect it even though the surface is very rough, right? It can even have holes in the surface. So if you've ever seen these radio telescopes, right, they're like a grid structure like this. Well, radio waves have wavelengths of like one meter long. So these things are able to reflect those radio waves, but obviously you don't have visible light bouncing off this because visible light can squeeze through those holes. You also see this on microwave ovens. Our microwaves have wavelengths of about 12 centimeters long. You get this little grid on the front facing, so the microwaves can't escape from the microwave. They stay inside and cook your food, yet visible light can get through. That's why you can look inside and look at it. If you're still confused with any of this, um, Pages 486 through 491 in your textbook is the reading that goes along with this, and there are some review questions in the back of chapter 27 on page 510.